welcome uh, today's lecture is uh, it's a brief overview uh, of some basic vrsi physical design automation concepts i missed the I missed in the title the it's VL, physical design automation that we are going to deal with uh, not general vrsi design which also includes logical uh, design automation so in this and the next couple of lectures uh, uh, there will be uh, some basic fundamental simplistic uh, overview uh, overview of some fundamental concepts will be given without uh, too much rigor and very formal treatment okay yeah so uh, what vlsi physical design automation is the stage uh, in the design automation after the logical design automation in the logical design automation the tools automation tools convert a behavioral specification uh, given in some high level language or some hardware description language is that is converted into a logic circuit in terms of gates or maybe in terms of nmos pmos switches and uh, th this so this uh, automated process is followed by, uh, with the, the process of physical design the flow of physical design in which a logic netlist is converted into a layout okay so basically this is logic to layout uh, automation so uh, so in this and the next couple of lectures i will focus on some uh, you know i'll give you a brief overview of some simple fundamental uh, basic concepts of uh, layout automation okay i mean uh, it's a subject by itself so you can uh, i mean you know look up the uh, course material of a course on vlsi cad and uh, that will give you more details of this all right so in the in the physical design automation cycle one like you know uh, there are several stages the ones which we are going to concentrate uh, i am going to concentrate on rather overview in this few lecture two three lectures are this first three stages which uh, where things begin with circuit partitioning a very general kind of stage a very important stage to manage the complexity of large designs circuit partitioning is followed by a floor planning and placement with the help of partitioning of a circuit a chip uh, area is uh, floor planned and a plan and different uh, zones of the chip area are allowed a uh, sort of assigned to earmarked for different sub designs uh, typically this could be uh, like you know uh, this could be manual design into a very uh, logical subsystems of the the original big complex design so floor planning is a kind of think we one can think of it as approximate uh, like you know getting an approx approximate idea how the layout would look like which sub designs would be on in which part portion of the chip how much area in which part of the chip would be reserved for which sub design that's the general objective of floor plan so it's a bit course level process at the finer level the placement process uh, shown here placement process will will uh, find out the computer details detailed locations of the cells the cells in the uh, blocks or the cells in the sub designs are to be placed in appropriate locations of the chip, of the portion of the area earmarked for that sub design okay so that's a placement so at the end of placement we have the we have this uh, regions where the cells are going to be placed including the orientation so we also know more or less precisely the location of the pins connection pins of those uh, those cells which have been placed and this information where the connection pins are at which coordinates of the chip this information is fed to the routing stage the routing stage the routing stage will will make use of this placement information and uh, connect up this like you know uh, lay out a, a net signal nets or wires based on their locations of their uh, connection the terminal pins so that's the router's job uh, our over will stop more or less over here with some also included will be some uh, like you know uh, overview of uh, the core concepts of static timing analysis and how they interact with uh, how they influence this physical de design uh, process flow so that will be subject of the next couple of lectures so in this lecture i'll just uh, 
skim through some basic concepts and for routing I will give illustrate couple of algorithms again basic algorithms through some example. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, I missed out something I have deliberately kept this blank there is uh, one can look at different levels of details after routing there will be within routing there will be some specific routing uh, for clock tree as well as power grid, power and ground network and after routing stage there will be st uh, typically stage of compaction of the layout, there will be a stage of verification of the layout and so on and so forth, extraction, uh, circuit simulation again post uh, layout simulation. Yeah, so, let us let me begin with circuit partitioning a few remarks on that. So, circuit partitioning is about conquering the complexity of implementation of a large design by partitioning the large circuit into sub circuits. Okay. Basically, the automation is required for very large designs, so complex digital systems where uh, like you know co fairly complicated behavior uh, requires a lot of uh, like you know is, is realized with the help of tens of thousands or millions of gates. So, the design is extremely complex large scale. So, the algorithms even if they are efficient in terms of run time, the uh, size of the problem is so big that to really aim for efficient implementation, efficient run time, one has to like you know use divide and conquer approach uh, wherein we will divide the problem, solve the sub problems uh, more or less independently, then conquer, then kind of stitch together so solutions of the sub problems and get obtain a good apparently good solution of the big problem. This technique does not necessarily always work uh, perfectly, but like you know it is a obvious natural paradigm for breaking down the complexity of problem by using this divide and conquer approach. Okay. So, we will partition the large design into sub circuits and this sub circuits I will call blocks of the partition. Okay. So, each block is a sub circuit and while partitioning the factors such as uh, sizes of the block, uh, how big the block is allowed to be, how many gates does it uh, is it allowed to have this kind of factor as well as the fact the important factor of number of interconnections between the blocks. These factors are extreme, extremely important while deciding the partition. So, we would like to say keep the sizes of the blocks under control, they should not be too small or too large. Okay too small would be a waste of uh, like you know the resource that uh, that uh, block is going to be laid out on okay layout of the block is going to be made up and then connections also we would like them to be minimized for some fairly intuitive reasons uh, as one as would be clear in the course of this lecture uh, next lectures so partitioning is a very interesting large scale optimization problem uh, very well researched and has applications in not just VLSI CAD but a large uh, set of applications in scientific computing and various other domains okay so uh, here is a small kind of uh, toy illustration of uh, circuit partitioning concept so here is on the left we have a circuit with uh, this 8 gates A 2 A B C D E F G H and uh, here there are two dotted lines dashed lines marked here one is labeled cut line which is basic which is separating gates A B C and D from the rest that is E F G H. So, cut 1 uh, is separating the block of the circuit A B C D from the other block E F G H whereas, the, uh, the this vertical cut line I mean this this particular dot dotted cut line which I labeled cut 2 is separating uh, the block containing A, B, D and E these gates from the block containing the gates C, F, G, H. So, these are uh, these two uh, these two cuts are uh, like describing two different partitions uh, each partition having two blocks. Okay. But uh, the quality of this partition is uh, or the this diff these different partitions will have different like you know implication as far as this uh, layout is concerned and that is one of the most obvious thing that you see over here is that for the, for the first partition which we have obtained using cut 1 which sep separates A B C D from E F G H you see that there are only two, two connections going from one side of the going from one block to the other block that is the layout of one of the blocks between the layout of the these two blocks 
there are only two connections crossing. So, it indicates that number like long running wires will be relatively few. On the other hand, for the other cut which separates A B D E from C F G H, you see that there are as many as 4 signal nets being cut between these blocks in between the layout of this layouts of this block. So, that means there is a more there is more chance of very long running wires uh, and that clearly like from intuitively from the timing point of view it could be a bad layout. Okay. Yeah, by the way this uh, example and this, this figures are taken from the book VLSI physical design title is VLSI physical design from graph partitioning to timing closure. The authors are Kahang, Leenig, Markov and Hu is published by Springer. It is a good compact book uh, with uh, several topics of physical design explained very well. Uh, algorithms details are given there is a plus lot of illustrations are there and a good book for both students as well as practitioners. Okay. So, this as well as many other uh, few other examples will be borrowed from this book. Uh, so, uh, some concepts in partitioning this part, the notion of, or the like terminology partition or block is a group collection of components or cell, cells. Okay. In general very typically one looks for two way partitioning partition into two blocks, but one can in, in general talk about k way partitioning where the task is to divide a circuit into k partitions. So, very often or like very typically partitioning problem is studied in uh, like with abstract graph models where the nodes represent the cells and the edges represent the connection between the cells. Sometimes uh, like you know uh, in the context of VLSI CAD uh, the extension of graph that is hypergraph concept is more often used. So, here is an uh, net list and that net list uh, the cells of that net list A, B, C, D whatever up to G are represented by the nodes of this graph. The way the cells are connected to each other in some sense may be sometimes with the direction information sometimes without direction information here in this case there is no direction information captured here. So, not everything that we know about a circuit is required for the sake of partitioning like only the abstract essence is required and that is captured in the graph model and that graph uh, is subject to partitioning al algorithms of uh, like various complexity or cleverness degrees of cleverness and uh, we get useful solutions or information out of it. More generally so called hypergraph model is used which I am not going to go into, but uh, very popular standard model uh, you look up this literature more and you will find I mean uh, you will encounter it very easily and uh, like there will be very lucid descriptions or explanations of that concept. And so, yeah, I, I think this was that was just a, a very like you know just a few no terminology, few no terms that one encounters in the context of partitioning. There will be I will give one sp uh, special lecture on the which uh, partitioning alone, which will give us illustration of one of the central like you know pioneering algorithm heuristic for circuit partitioning. Okay, of course, it uh, it will there will not be something it will not be a very clever kind of algorithm which with lot of sophistication, but it turned out to be some an algorithm which uh, like you know which solved the problem decently and which gave rise to lot of in, uh, very interesting variations and extensions. Yeah, so, that is later. So, partitioning I will I uh, will skip over to the next uh, uh, this uh, in fact uh, after partitioning as I said partitioning would, would have been used for uh, floor plan deciding the floor plan of the uh, of the chip like if some pa good partition is known which is like you know which divides a big circuit into some very uh, like modular logical comp sub circuits or some algorithm finds this good partitions uh, good blocks then uh, uh, correspondingly the the chip area is uh, is divided into uh, reasonably la appropriately large or appropriately shaped uh, rectangles or uh, like you know regions and different regions are earmarked for different sub designs which have been obtained in the process of partitioning after uh, floor planning one gets a, a rough idea about where each sub design is going to be laid where the layout of each each one of the sub designs is going to be 
and then the placement problem is going to detail out uh, the lo exact locations of the cells which is within each block of circuit and uh, within the corresponding area of the chip. So, placement here uh, placement is the problem of, uh, where we are given a net list okay, and uh, like logic net list or whatever circuit we have to find the exact locations of the cells. The objectives are like the primary objectives are uh, area and wire length. We like to uh, for natural reasons, intuitive reasons we would like to minimize the area of the uh, layout uh, because one typically wants as small as possible uh, VLSI chips and we would also like to minimize the wire length either the total wire length or the maximum length of any particular wire. So, or a kind of combination of such uh, objectives will be used for optimization. Wire length is directly related to complexity of routing as well as the delay, the timing performance critic. Okay. So, placement is, go, uh, is a complex problem because it is going to deal with a large uh, problem and uh, it, it has to, it has both combinatorial and combinatorial as well as geometric uh, character and a lot of uh, research has ha happened in this area and there is a variety of approaches. Uh, fairly interesting uh, its subject by itself. So, let us just add okay, another in one extra one specific lecture I would uh, take I will illustrate one uh, interesting example of a placement algorithm uh, just for the sake of flavor. So, that will be later. So, I will just give a very brief uh, uh, introduction to the notions involved in placement or some ex example not the algorithm itself in this lecture. In the later lecture there will be uh, illustration of a, a specific algorithm, which I will just mention which one. So, placement uh, as shown again in this figure, uh, in this figure from the same book that I mentioned earlier, there is this, uh, there is a net list with this 8 gates and uh, if the target of the placement uh, is a one dimensional like uh, one dimensional chip, where wherein we have a lot of, uh, we can accommodate a row of standard cells for example, then then the uh, placement problem is really about like ordering the cells, each one of the cells which would fit on a, which would be implemented as a st standard cell. Linear, uh, uh, the placement is essentially finding, uh, deciding on a linear ordering, sequential ordering of these cells. Depending on which order we lay, uh, in which order we lay out these cells, the length of the wires would be optimized or total length or the maximum length of uh, any wire would be optimized and that would uh, give rise to like you know different degrees of timing performance. If the target chip is two dimensional, then the layout might look like this uh, like uh, not the layout the placement rather, placement might look like this uh, uh, in two different rows or like you know whatever in a 2D fashion and depending on the placement of cells in different positions, the, uh, the routing the wires might look congested or might become a bit long or total wire length might be large and the router might have more difficulty and the timing might, uh, might be better or worse depending on the quality of the placement. After placement and routing one would typically have a picture like this where we have this, this gates placed in the standard cell as standard cells uh, like in two different rows with some uh, sometimes some gaps between them through which routing can be done but there will be optimization of this placement done by the placement algorithm and the router will take care of finding the best possible route. So, that the number of uh, the amount of routing region is as minimum as possible. So, that the whole area is as small as possible. At the same time the locations of the terminals I O pads will also be taken into account uh, uh, while doing this routing or and placement, placement and routing. So, in the end we would have a layout of this kind and most uh, like for large designs it will have to be necessarily automated. The, here is a picture of how uh, placement uh, can like influence uh, the quality of routing. So, both these pictures uh, figures show some different placements of a set of cells from A to whatever G or A to K what is yeah A B C D F G K. Uh, this they roughly this both this placement roughly occupy the same area 
and uh, uh, so that means the same amount of rooting area, but uh, depending, uh, but the the placement on the left hand, left hand side is clearly like you know something that favors a better rooting. So as seen, like although this is not ex really rooting, but we know that if the wires are going to go from these terminals of these cells to these terminals and so on so forth, this information is known because the placement uh, process has computed the the locations of the pins and uh, the uh, the circuit information has the connections connect how the pins are connected to each other. So, that gives us some picture of approximate picture of how the routing will look like. Whereas, in this the routing appears to be much worse. So, uh, like you know so the placement influences the quality of routing in a significant fashion. So, placement is a very important part of the process. Uh, placement algorithms there is a rich set of placement algorithms broadly classified into this paradigms first one is top down not in any specific order of uh, like but first uh, popular paradigm is top down which is a recursive paradigm then there is iterative method for placement uh, like you know uh, vlsi layout place circuit placement then this const constructive or incremental process of generating a layout or placement and they are quite interesting mathematical approaches based on linear algebra, matrix computations or mathematical programming cause in particular say quadratic programming. Uh, very, many of them use eigen spectrums, eigen values and eigen vectors of matrix called Laplacian which is a matrix obtained by the connectivity in, from the connectivity information. This top down approach uh, is a recursive approach uh, which uh, typically uses two way or min cut partitioning which partition the circuit into two parts and uh, two these two different parts are to be laid out on two dif uh, two like you know uh, e roughly equal portions of the chip and these two portions of the chip would have been found by like choosing a horizontal or vertical cut line of dividing the chip area into two parts so the circuit is partitioned into two blocks and the chip is partitioned into two parts and then the then we have two separate sub problems which have which can which should be solved separately and then uh, maybe with some awareness of each other and then uh, this solution should be stitched together if each one of these sub problems itself is uh, not uh, small enough then we have to do this we can go ahead and do the same process recursively partition each one of the blocks into two parts but now like you know use the alternative uh, like uh, other kind of cut line if we had early, earlier chosen to divide the chip into two uh, parts left and right. Then now, uh, for the next level we can divide the chip into uh, each par portion of the chip left right portion into top and bottom left top and left bottom uh, similarly right top and right bottom. So, we can have alternating uh, like you know di uh, division or uh, space division of the chip and uh, correspondingly we will be recursively subdividing the given net list also. So, appropriate circuit uh, partitioning algorithm would be used depending on the efficiency or quality. Uh, in fact, many different heuristics can be tried one does not always put faith in full faith in just one, one algorithm. I mean most of these problems are hard NP hard and so uh, very little of guarantees are given uh, about the qualities, but roughly the benchmarking has in, would indicate that many of these algorithms are good they perform quite well. Still one would like to try out different algorithms and choose the best uh, result of, uh, of one of the I mean uh, among them. Then the about the iterative paradigm, I, iterative uh, algorithms one of the most well known algorithm is uh, like based on the even more celebrated well known like paradigm called simulated annealing which is uh, which is uh, like an extension of Mark Metropolis algorithm regarded as one of the top 10 algorithms of the century. Uh, very popular paradigm uh, uh, like uh, which is based on interesting theory of Markov process uh, chains and uh, so it does uh, it is not extremely fast, but it does tend to give uh, like you know good solutions if we run it long enough and it is always available as one of the options in the kit of uh, with for the placement algorithms. Similar to uh, an another another important iterative method that is again based on some interesting concept of from physics is the so called force directed placement. Okay. The force directed placement is based on 
like you know uh, is it uses this mass spring model and uh, you know so the cells which are like regarded as masses and the connections between the cells uh, depending on the degree of connection the amount of connection a spring is uh, a strong or a weak spring it attached and based on the forces exerted uh, this uh, cells the masses will kind of uh, settle down in some position and that position is used as a as an estimate or as an approximation to the placement uh, detail the locations constructive algorithms are incremental they start with some cells at the center and then place highly connected adjacent modules around them okay so it's incremental you start have you make some clever decision about what to place first which seems to be at the center of the things and then based on that those location and the connectivity of some of the modules which are highly connected to this uh, set of already placed no cells we start placing the uh, those uh, at those highly connected adjacent modules around them and so on so forth then we have less connected uh, less thickly connected modules will be in the outer uh, like zone and so on so uh, this incremental thing might look nice but again the choice of uh, which cells to choose which uh, how to estimate how to quick efficiently compute the good neighborhood or good cells for the next uh, like placement and all that there is lot of uh, cleverness possible here a lot various algorithms have been would have been uh, heuristics would have been have been designed for uh, for this paradigm uh, as i have already mentioned about linear algebraic approaches they use the eigen spectrum of laplacian so and to kind of embed the prop convert the combinatorial more or less combinatorial problem of finding the locations relative look um, or the positions at which the cells should be uh, should be placed this problem is converted into a geometric problem where the geometric information is obtained uh, with the help of several eigen vectors for example and eigen vectors uh, which eigen vectors that would depend on uh, the uh, say smallest eigen values or smallest set of smallest eigen certain smallest number of smallest eigen values so it is backed by interesting theory from uh, like uh, linear algebra and spectral graphs one of the main theorems is easy but important theorems which is uh, uh, whose variations are used here are is the so called hall's theorem so, uh, similar to very very similar to this linear algebraic uh, eigen value eigen vector based approaches there is a mathematical programming approach uh, based on quadratic programming where we use some of the squares of uh, like uh, the kind of euclidean distance square of the euclidean euclidean length of the nets so there will be some uh, it will have some of the squares kind of form so it will have the quadratic objective uh, function and using again lagrangian techniques or calculus non linear programming ideas one can arrive at good solutions uh, with this interesting approaches and of course with some post processing one uh, and uh, with combining this solutions with some other heuristics one can get uh, like you know better solutions so this so this techniques will not uh, claim to be the best techniques by themselves they can be variously combined with each other and or like independently used for finding the best and so on so there is a, a fairly broad set of algorithms for placement so in one lecture i'm going to focus on the placement by partitioning a slightly informal introduction or illustration would be given and that placement by partitioning is the top down approach uh, where a partitioning may be targeted for 1d or 2d layout of a chip and the, the netlist will be partitioned into two parts at each level of the recursion the with, with the objective that they should be placed into two parts which we have cut the chip into maybe left and right part or top and bottom part the aim would be to minimize the number of crossing wires and if the sub problems still happen to be complex in sense of size then we recursively continue the same process but the chip area sub areas will be partitioned with alternating directions horizontal vertical and so on so forth so that's a rough idea about placement by partitioning after this i'll move to the routing like some disk like overview of routing algorithms uh, here i will have 
couple of concrete illustrations, but very informal, very sketchy, just highlighting the uh, main ideas which are very intuitive. Uh, like uh, other than, uh, so at the end of this lecture, I would have given you couple of examples of routing. Then, in this couple of subsequent lectures, there will be an illustration of placement algorithm, specifically placement by partitioning, with the idea of terminal propagation. A separate lecture on will be there on partitioning also a simple well known algorithm called kerning handling will be discussed there. And in another lecture I would give you some idea of uh, overview of uh, the main core concepts of timing analysis. Okay. Again the graph model how the graph model is used and how like uh, this uh, timing I mean using the delay information uh, the so called uh, arrival times actual arrival times and required arrival times are computed that will be in a separate lecture and how the why timing uh, is important from the perspective of physical design flow that also will be remarked. So, next I will be going to uh, routing. Uh, so, after having taken a very very brief look at uh, the concepts of uh, partitioning and placement, I will just uh, give a couple of examples of uh, concepts involved in routing, the algorithmic concept ideas involved in routing. Routing as, re, as I remarked before is about like you know finding the layout for the actual the wires, the actual layout for these signal nets, uh, because, because at the end of partitioning we know the locations of the terminal pins of every uh, the pins uh, terminal pins of every part every signal net. Some of them are coming from uh, the periphery of the chip boundary of the chip, uh, some are coming from obviously driven by the cells. So, with this information uh, we have a fairly complex task of uh, like routing possibly millions of uh, wires. Okay, or like. So, it is a very large scale problem again. So, again uh, in some sense like uh, of course, we we can look at sub several sub portions and do routing separately, but routing itself is uh, divided into two phases. Okay. There is something called global routing which is a bit course level routing uh, and there is something called detailed routing. So, these are the major phases in routing. The global routing would have the task of assigning nets the signal nets to routing areas. The uh, after placement we have the idea we have know exactly where the cells are and we know which areas of the chip are free for routing the wires, routing the signal nets. So, this routable areas are divided into sub areas called root, routing regions and so there is a vast collection of routing regions, the, uh, maybe th they are like you know rectangles or square like shapes uh, regions. And uh, the global routing is to like uh, uh, global routing would identify for every net which of this uh, sub area, uh, which of this routing regions the sig signal net should uh, should be lay out, laid out uh, in sort of. You know, and the detailed routing is going to actually like you know find out the, the particular track inside each re region along which the wire will be, uh, wires layout will be fixed. Okay. So, uh, global routing is kind of going to look at a big problem, the whole a a chip the whole uh, set of root, routing regions and all signal nets and for every net it is going to find this set of uh, routing regions through which a net will uh, ideally pass. So, that the effect the, I mean uh, like the, the routes are as short as possible hopefully. Detailed routing is going to look at each sub region and within the sub region it is going to fix uh, the, uh, the position of the wire, the track on which the wire will be on which layer, on which horizontal uh, horizontal track, on which vertical uh, kind of branch, all that will be decided by uh, detailed routing. The, so, global routing after placement we have the exact terminal locations and we want to assign this, this routing regions so called which could be either channels or switch boxes we want to find which of these channels and switch boxes should be used to route the net a particular net and this has to be done for each net. Detailed routine will determine the exact route and layers for each net within the assigned routing region. Okay, that is what I just remarked. So, here is one illustration from the book of Sherwani. So, these are this, the, uh, this blue portion rectangles are the regions uh, where the cells have been placed and this dotted 
uh, red lines are uh, are like uh, the approximate picture of how the wires will be routed uh, and then the detailed routing is going to fix exact location the horizontal vertical uh, horizontal tracks vertical branches along which this wire should go this is still just a abstract picture but uh, this is one way of like you know visualizing what global routing and detailed routing mean here is uh, another picture of example from taken from the net like uh, by professor she is uh, from the course of uh, texas a m university so here is the set of cells and some wires connecting them then the remaining uh, the, the regions outside the cell uh, cell place cells is the root, rootable region and that region is broken up into rectangle shapes and which are called channels so for example this is one channel this is another channel one more channel here so so many channels and a few switch boxes like this these are called switch switch boxes so this this regions are identified by the uh, by a pre processing part of global routing and uh, then for every net every one of this connect uh, signal net uh, the global router would identify that this particular net which goes from d to this particular pin of b should go through this channel and then should go through this switch box and then through this particular channel and on to this particular pin and so on so forth for so for every net such like you know a sequence of uh, channels and switch boxes would be identified then detailed routing is going to look at each channel and each switch box and fix the positions of the wires tracks uh, which track and which branch vertical branch uh, which horizontal track that will be fixed by detailed routing that will be could be something like this okay then uh, to model the algorithms to kind of describe the algorithms uh, routing regions are represented typically using a graph graph model again the graph graph is a very popular data structure in this combinatorial algorithms for physical design automation the uh, nodes of the graph would represent the routing sub regions like channels and switch boxes and the edges represent their adjacencies for each connection each net the router determines a path uh, with within the graph that connects the terminal pins okay or maybe uh, like something and a tree not just a path as i'll illustrate in the next example but the important thing is that the path can travel uh, can only traverse those nodes and edges of, of that graph which have sufficient remaining routing resources for example this is a sequential process one net at a time is routed maybe okay in the worst case just one net at a time and then after lay out, laying out after figuring out uh, approximate routes for each one of this uh, nets done so far we would have uh, we should reduce the capacities of those regions because some of them have been committed for like uh, for for the layout of some of the segments of the nets so uh, the resource availability of each routing region or each channel is going to be updated while like you know and use that that information would be used while figuring out uh, the uh, global route for the next uh, net that is to be that would be considered so this graph models uh, have the nodes and edges uh, like with capturing appropriate information about the routing regions and their adjacency but the capacity is in some kind of cap resource capacity information is also available which will which will be incrementally updated decremented rather uh, to keep track of how much is the available routing resource within that region one of the uh, specific kinds of graph used in this uh, root, uh, global routing is so called grid graph which uh, so this grid graph is a commonly used data structure or graph structure in this uh, uh, like the example is over here this example is from kang's book Uh, so whole chip area is divided into into this grid uh, the size of the grid will be uh, will uh, will be chosen appropriately if you want if you want to use this idea for global routing essentially for coarse approximate routing then this grid can be coarse if you want this idea of grid graph to be used for detailed routing like you know we want to get more accurate idea then the grid uh, grid should be very much finer along the grid we will have uh, like you know there will be uh, places where the cells are placed and based on that 
uh, part of this grid cells will be like you know would have reduced capacity for routing purpose and so on. So, for, for example, the cell number 12 has plenty of capacity routing capacity play cell number 11 grids this is not cell of the circuit, but cell of the grid this cell uh, grid cell of the chip will have more routing cap capacity whereas, something like uh, cell number grid cell number 13 will have very little area for routing and so on. And the adjacency of this grid cells is uh, captured by edges the grid cells are represented by nodes of this graph and some shortest path or variations of shortest path algorithms are going to be implemented on such uh, graph structures which will lead to the solutions of global routing problems. Okay. Uh, similar uh, to grid graph uh, rather not similar alternate as an alternative to grid graph there is something called channel adjacency graph where every channel of say channel 1, 2, 3, 4 all the, each one of the channel is represented by a node of a graph and depending on which channels are adjacent there is an edge between the nodes of the corresponding channel. So, channel 1 and channel 2 are adjacent. So, there is an edge again the this there will be some cap, could be some capacity information of this nodes and edges reflecting the routing capacities or some other factors. So, but for the sake of illustration I am going to uh, like lead you through one very simple uh, paradigm called maze routing in various like other context uh, you might have noticed heard about maze routing it is very popular it is one of the earliest algorithms for the routing uh, problem. So, as shown over here uh, like you know uh, maze routing will use some kind of grid and the uh, this dark blue portions not dark sorry this light blue portions are uh, say representing some uh, obstacles in the mesh which uh, in the maze and these are indeed the places where cell uh, the logic circuit cells have been placed. So, these are not available for routing whereas, this empty like you know uh, white background uh, grid cells are available for routing. Supposing a net has to connection has to be made from somewhere over here to some place over here then then correspondingly like uh, we will have to find some kind of shortest path through this uh, grid the maze and that would evidently be this ok. Uh, if you just look at the other alternative which will be bit longer than this ok. So, there are more possibilities than this, but one such uh, good short like sh sh as short as possible or often the shortest possible sequence of such grid cells is used for the purpose of uh, like you know eventual routing of a signal a wire from S to T. Okay, and once that wire from S to once that is chosen then uh, these capacities of each one of the grid cells along this path would be decremented to reflect that like some part partial use of that uh, those routing regions. Okay. Now, I will take you through an illustration of a simple idea. So, supposing here is uh, uh, like you know a, ch a chip area which is divided into this grid and this dark blue portions are the of are the regions where you cannot do any routing because this is where this uh, circuit cells have been placed. And let us say uh, there are some in this uh, grid cells marked A, B, C, D, we have some pins uh, which need to be connected by a single net. Okay. Maybe that net is getting driven by A and is driving some uh, uh, pin of a, of a uh, gate in, uh, in this zone C or in zone B as well as in zone D. Okay, these are the grid cell zones. So we would like hope we would like to eventually arrive at some you know uh, so called a net of this kind A driving it the signal flowing to B as well as to C as well as to D. Okay, so how is this to be computed? So this is the in initial data for every net which is multi term which could be a multi terminal net you would have such such for uh, like. Uh, routing cells marked as the uh, thing the terminals to be connected terminal cells or grid cells to be connected. So, main idea in this algorithm is so called a wave front and very natural idea. So, what we are going to do is propagate wave waves and like when the and you know in synchronous uh, fashion. So, from every cell you will start up start out a wave which will like you know move one distance one neighboring cell further 
and when this wave fronts meet each other that is the time we know that a short connection is like you know found out and like you know a bit of bookkeeping is required with the uh, with the help of so called the front of the wave wave front and that will give us the final answers help in get help us in getting the layout of a net connecting a b c d so for, we start a wave front in the first uh, like step the wave front uh, would be at the distance one from the sources so this is uh, cell routing cell marked grid cell marked 1a 1a indicating that it's at, dis, at distance one from a it's part of the wave front that is started from a similarly from b we the wave front reaches this cell as well as this and this from c it reaches here it's marked 1c and 1c and from d it reaches this two okay in the next step so note that the wave fronts are not still like you know touched each other whereas in the next step from 1c the uh, and this cells the wave front will start will reach this 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 as well as this okay but before the, uh, growing the wave uh, wave front of c we would have grown the wave front of b and uh, b's wave front would have reached over here so this would have been marked to b okay so this uh, in the sec next step b's wave front would have reached here marked in yellow to b okay A's wave front would have reached this locations, uh, this cells uh, marked 2A, 2A, 2A. B's wave front would have reached here, here as well as here. Now, when you start like you know updating the wave front of C, you notice that okay, this becomes the new cell, grid cell on the wave front. This also is on wave front of C. But while like growing the wave front from here to here, one notices that we are already adjacent to the wave front touching the wave front of b and that indicates that now we have identified uh, like an, a kind of uh, a sequence of grid cells through which a short connection can be made between c and b and that we uh, like you know fix in this okay similarly the wave front of d has been expanded uh, extended to c cover visit 2d and this particular cell okay so only this connection has been made Whereas in the next next step, this wave fronts of A is going to reach such cells, this this one, where and this one. Wave front of B will reach here. Wave front of C will reach here, 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 and over here also. And when we start growing wave front of D, we'll notice that wave front of C, which has reached here, is clashing, is touching the wave front of D. So, D and C uh, would get connected in the next clock cycle in the next step as shown over here. The wave front of C would have reached here and when we start growing the wave front of D, we re realize that this is adjust already adjacent to the wave, wave front of C and that means a connection between D and C has been good connection has been found out. That means a good set of sequence of uh, grid cells would have been identified per, for the purpose of detailed routing which is to be done later. Now, still uh, we have so far managed to connect uh, B A and B C and D, A is still remaining, but now looking at the wave fronts we realize that in the very next step it is going to become evident that like you know when we try to grow the wave front of A from 3 A to this, it would realize that it is already touching the wave front of B. So, connection between A and B would also be found out in the next step and that would be this. So, this will complete uh, uh, like you know an approximately good uh, there this problem of finding so such so called Steiner trees connecting a set of terminals is again an NP hard problem even in the rectilinear uh, Manhattan kind of setup. So, one does not expect optimal answers for large problems. So, this is can this can be regarded as one clever heuristic which is very easy to implement on obvious data structures and also fairly parallelizable has some benefits in terms of elegance and simplicity. So, such a heuristic is going to give you some decent uh, quality uh, multi terminal Steiner tree a net layout of a net and uh, variations of this ideas. In fact, what I have shown here is not the basic idea that was due to Lee and Moore called maze routing idea which was essentially for two terminal uh, like uh, nets very simple simplified assumption was made that every net is just having two terminals a source and a target source and a sink and then 
uh, some kind of this wave front pro wave propagation idea was used to uh, like identify the shortest path uh, through this grid graph through this grid and cell from source to the target and then like some extensions of this idea were made for multi terminal nets and so this uh, just to indicate that various similar ideas are possible i have given you uh, like outline of one idea that is possible this I am not giving any pseudo code for that, you, it would be an interesting exercise to try and capture it as a well defined uh, heuristic and uh, how the bookkeeping is precisely done and when exactly uh, the labels are updated, when exactly the wave front uh, like you know when does one uh, realize that wave fronts are touching and uh, it is a time to kind of capture that information and record it as a good connection all that and when to stop and so on all that would be like an interesting exercise to figure out uh, like uh, and convert this into a pseudo code and then into a regular uh, implementation okay and maybe parallelization other than this so this was an ex this can be regarded as a typical example of a simple example of global routing like identifying the regions the grid cell regions through which a multi terminal network uh, net should be laid out and then uh, at a detailed routing one would have uh, several such problems where we have several different channels and for each channel we know where the net enters through a pin and like channels are those regions where the pins are on either side the longer sides opposite sides and like you know we have specific specification of which pins are to be connected to which which pin is to be connected to which one it could be multi terminal pin or it could be two terminal pins and within the channel we have some number of horizontal tracks and we have to figure out ex exact uh, like horizontal track that should be used for the layout and the corresponding vertical connections from the pins to that track okay and uh, one of the natural op optimization criterion would be to use minimum number of tracks so that uh, in the at the time of compaction of the layout this channel can be reduced in size in the beginning with some pessimism we would have allowed a big enough channel with large number with uh, sufficient many like you know tracks and uh, if uh, if we optimize well the number of tracks used would be as few as possible would uh, help us like you know string this channel into a na narrower channel at the time of compaction and which would which would improve uh, the size or the area requirement of that particular layout so here is an example where we have a channel with uh, this pins marked 1 2 3 4 and so on uh, some of the pins are not marked indicating that those pins are not to be used there is no net like being connected to these pins you see that sometimes net is connecting pins on the same side one and one there is no pin number one on the other side sometimes net connects something like say five pin number five to pin number five on the other side so as well as there is another pin number five so this is the multi terminal net connecting this pin with these two pins number five so you can have different kinds of nets and uh, a solution would look like this which would make use of horizontal tracks like this which are the main trunks of this uh, net layouts and vertical so called branches okay and so on so this net has this particular trunk which is on this horizontal track and connected using this vertical branch and this vertical branch you know, so there will be a layer of horizontal wires tracks and there will be maybe one or two layers of vertical branches uh, why more that would become clear because sometimes the nets can have overlapping positions and the vertical branches might overlap so you to have uh, like you know to have them separately laid out we might require more than one vertical layer so channel routing is also very well investigated problem and one of the imp very basic idea uh, like for starters is the so called left edge algorithm. So, this is a very simple very greedy algorithm which is uh, like I mean which is where one begins the study of such algorithms because it is based on uh, like you know a simple greedy algorithm and uh, I mean strategy which it turns shows which is which can be shown to be optimal in case of in the absence of certain constraints in case of very simple highly simplified assumptions. For example, if we assume that all the nets are just two terminal nets. So, one net 1 is connecting this pin with this and nothing else. Net 2 is connecting this pin with this one. 
So, all the, uh, all the nets here are just two terminal nets and we also assume that we have say plenty of vertical, vertical layers, plenty means two or three whatever that should suffice. So, it is just a matter of then like because we have, we do not have any restriction number of vertical layers for routing the, for fixing the vertical branches. The problem really boils down to like assigning the horizontal uh, like you know the trunks to appropriate tracks. So, net number 6 should have the scope from this left end point to the this right end point okay? because this is the pin or left uh, leftmost pin of net number 6 and this is the rightmost pin of net number 6. So, net uh, 6 has to be laid out uh, in this zone maybe on this track or some other track. Okay? Net number 1 will start at this x coordinate and will go up to this. It need not be on this track. This track may not be the best choice for net number 1 and so on. So, what this algorithm does is sorts this the nets by the left end point. So, here net number 6 will be the first to be considered because its left end point is the earliest. The net number 3 or 1 will be considered next because their left end point is the next earliest and so on. So, now we look, look at them one by one. So, net number 6. Okay. So, that is the first one in the sorted list because it's, it starts at the earliest leftmost end point. Okay. So, this is routed uh, laid out on the first available track horizontal track and obviously, the connection is made with the help of one vertical uh, metal layer uh, wire here and one, one of the vertical wires available from here to here. Okay. A wire will be placed over here connecting the vertical segment with this horizontal. After 6, we will choose 3 or 1, let us say 1, 1 will go from uh, 1 will be connected over here then on this horizontal track and then connected again by a vertical metal wire from here to here and connected by a wire, wire will be here as well as here. So, the scope, the horizontal scope of this one is from here to here. Okay, just notice that the track for 1 has been like you know we had to choose a new track for horizontal track for 1. We could not uh, lay out 1 on the same horizontal track as net number 6 because there would be an overlap and we are assuming that we have only one horizontal layer, but maybe two or more vertical layers. So, we cannot have the layout of net number 1 and net number 6 on the same horizontal track because of the obvious overlap. So, net number 1 has to be opened up on a new track, net number 3 but the similar considerations has to be put on a new track next track, track number 3. So, we seem to be using one track in every such uh, case. Let us look at the next one number 4, for, uh, no next, next one is number 5 that is the next one in the sorted order and again we have to open up a new track, but now when we look at net number 4 which is next we realize that its scope is from pin number 4 to this pin number 4 and you see that it can be accommodated on the first track itself because the first track now is empty the net 6 has finished its scope and net 4 can now start. So, you see next that net number 4 can be laid out on this on one of the earlier utilized tracks specifically track number 1 itself. So, this is how we are kind of now uh, this hopefully the algorithm is optimizing as compared to this picture where we have used one track per net, we will we'll be reusing some of the tracks for more than one nets. After that net number 2 again can be accommodated since its scope is from here to here, this horizontal scope is just this much, it can be fitted on the sec on the second track because net number 1 which was laid out on that track is now over. Okay. So, 2. So, that that is over. So, we have laid out all the 6 uh, horizontal tracks of the 6 nets using only 4 tracks as compared to using 6 tracks over here. If we had if we had been less careful, we would have used 6 tracks or 5 tracks, but optimal one this is this can be shown to be optimum uh, solution because of uh, assumptions that we are making because this particular example does not have has only 2 terminal nets and assume that there would not be any problem in laying, laying out the vertical wires, they would not overlap. If they overlap, we can use different layer, different vertical layer for uh, the vertical branches. If in the absence of such so called vertical constraints, this algorithm will be optimum, will give you optimal result for 
uh, set of two terminal networks which are to be laid out in a channel. So, and it is more sophisticated variations or more like you know uh, practical uh, enhancements like there is something called greedy channel router GCR, there is uh, dog leg router and various uh, ch channel routing algorithms have been investigated and most of the standard text will give you a good treatment of uh, this algorithm. So, the purpose here was just a very uh, sketchy like uh, simplistic overview and next couple of lectures we will have we will address the other alg algorithms for placement on partitioning and timing. Okay. So, I stop here.